Hello everybody, um, today is the set date for my third summer forecast, and in this video, I'm going to show it to you. The new jam stack runs are not yet out, so I'm not gonna go cover the April runs, because I already covered them in the second uh, summer forecast, so I'm gonna get right to you the forecast. Um, so I got seven slides here, and I got summer forecast to include uh, the temperatures, precipitation, severe weather, uh, drought risk, and yeah, then two slides about the hurricane season, uh, about the hurricane season, and overall setup outlook. So let's start with the temperatures. Yes, that's the first slide. Okay, so here we are. This is uh, U.S. Weather Plus Summer Forecast Number Three temperatures. So um, let's see what we have here. Now here's the temperature key. You know, let's start with the blue colors. Now the darker blue color is the well below average temperatures. So if you live in the Pacific Northwest, as usual, as ma in many cases you will be uh, cool and you will be pretty cold, well below average. Also, a new addition is that if you live somewhere um, along the Great Lake, the northern tier, the Great Lakes, um, northern Michigan, all the upper peninsula, northern lower peninsula, in northeastern Minnesota, maybe, maybe northern Wisconsin, you could be getting well below our temperatures too. And if you are in the interior northeast, you're gonna be below below average. Upstate New York, northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, and western Maine, extreme western Maine. Now the lighter blue color. Now that's um, that's where you, where you have below average temperatures. They're not well below average, but they'll still be below average. Now, it still ports the northwest even below Washington. You still are below average, and farther into the northern plains, you'll be below average as well as portions of the upper Midwest and Midwest down to. Illinois, perhaps Chicago, Indiana, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and then down to New Jersey and along New England. Pretty much all of New England. Also, something I want to note is that there's another pocket of cold air that's gonna form in the southeast, in the Gulf Coast, where in western Florida where the Florida Panhandle, Western Florida, and Southwestern Alabama could be below average too in extreme southeastern Mississippi. And I'll explain why a little bit later when I get to the hurricane outlook and the overall setup because there might be something interesting going on, an interesting pattern. And, uh, and then the gray, I mean the blank area, that's when you're, that's when you're average. And um, pretty much the part portions of the um, West Central states, down the Midwest, in Mid Atlantic states, you'll be average as well as portions of the Mid South and Central Florida. Now, the yellow color that's where you become above average. Now, this area, there's a wide area that you'll be above average in temperatures. Uh, from the west to the south, from the southwest to the plains, down to the Ozarks, in the southeast, and even in the eastern Florida and back in the North Carolina. Now, this might not only be warm temperatures in eastern Florida, this might be a small drought, a minor drought. Because there is already a little bit of drought in this area. Now, some of this might worsen around Jacksonville. Now where you see the red, 
um, well above average temperatures. So this is this area, pretty much the southwest, much of the southwest and lower plains, because this is the lower plains. See, it could be well about average here, and possibly it could. Well, yeah, no, never mind. Um, so you'd be well about average here. Let me check how much time I have. Okay, now I gotta go to the precipitation. Okay, so here's the precipitation. Um, so. The dark green color, that's well above average precipitation. Again, you hawks in the northwest will be uh, cold and wet. Now, you'll not be as cold and wet here, you'll not be as wet here, but you get into this area in Lower New England, around Cape Cod especially, you'll be really wet. Now, I'll explain why later. Also, yeah, now I'm gonna get to the light green, that's, um, that's just about average precipitation. So here you get in the Northern Plains and much of the Great Lakes region would be about average precipitation in the Northeast, all the Northeast except northern part of Maine. Also, I want to alert you to another thing. You get a little area of above average precipitation here. Now I'll explain why when I'm talking about the hurricanes, I'll explain why. But <laughs> And now the yellow color is below average precipitation. So this yellow area got a wide area of below average precipitation from the southwest and the plains down to the Ozarks and the southeast. Pretty much the same area as the above average temperatures will be. And while below average precipitation in this area, extending from the deserts in the southwest up through the middle plains. And even in portions of the Midwest, because Iowa and Missouri is the mid, this I would call this the Midwest. So, a little bit extending to the Midwest. <laughs> um, yeah. Now, severe weather. Now, speaking about severe weather, first I want to show you a quick graphic I made. Um. Okay, so here it is. Um, so hang on. Okay, it's the, I will show it really quick. So, this is the USA tornado came January to May 2013. As you see, in January, we will were well above average tornadoes because the, this blue line is the average tornadoes. And we had twice as much sure as the average. February, we were pretty much average, very slightly above average. March, we were well below average. Look at the blue lines here. And in April, we were so much below average, I just can't describe it. record breaking below average. Because look where the blue line is and where the bar extends. We had less than 100 tornadoes against an average of 380. So currently, that means we're in a tornado drought. So I'm gonna get to the severe weather outlook. So why I think that some of the strain drought will remain, but we might get out of it, but it will not be about average. So the inner man west will be low risk of severe weather, um, very isolated in these areas because it's the mountains. Um, now. The yellow area is a moderate risk of the southwest. You could be seeing your seasonal thunderstorms in late summer, let's say August. And then here, you could say, you could see there will be a drought, and so not such a high risk of severe weather, but there could be some. Um, now, we have a large area of orange, that's high risk. Um, so, for the Great Lakes region, for portions of the northeast, you could there's a high risk for the portions of the southeast and eastern Florida. There's a high risk as well as portions of the mid south in this narrow passage here. Now there are several areas of extreme risk. Now, as you know, um, when you have hurricane to tropical storms, uh, you get tornadoes 
which means that since hurricanes will be coming here, and I'll explain that later, you'll be having a the highest threat of severe weather in this area. One of the highest threats on the country hurricanes will have. Then some hurricanes will go up here, which means this area has a chance of tornadoes too. And then lots of systems will go like this and join with systems going here and produce more severe weather because of warm air from here and cold air from here. So this is the this is where we could see the most hail and damaging wind, more just a weak tornado threat in this area and in this area. Now, um, the drought risk. So, <laughs> the light green is just a slight risk. So, we got a slight risk for the slight green area, mainly across the west and extending into the southeast. Now, the yellow area is enhanced, uh, an elevated risk. Now, mainly it's in the west, it's mainly in the west in plains, but a little stretch of an elevated risk is in the coastal Georgia and northeastern Florida. So that's where you can see a little drought. Um, the red is the enhanced risk. And uh, this area for much of the plains and uh, the southwest is an enhanced risk. And the brown or dark red is extreme risk. And it's for the deserts of the southwest as well as the Middle Plains. Now, uh, gotcha. okay, so I hope you liked this video, and in the next video, I'm going to, um, I'm going to show you the, I'm going to show you all, I'm going to talk only about the hurricanes and the setup for this summer, because I don't have enough time in this video to talk about it, so I hope you enjoyed the f this first part of the summer forecast number three. West Water Plus, which include drought risk, severe weather, temperatures, and precipitation. Um, as soon as this video will be uploaded, I'm going to make my my next video, which will be including er everything about hurricanes. The last three slides, part two out of two. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Join me for part two. Bye.